if anyone has used both, you know, CDK, which is uh, Amazon's cloud developer kit for Terraform or Pulumi, and he'd be interested in their impressions on using that. And, you know, he has a team of Go developers. So using HCL is actually harder for him to get this adopted. So our audience is very skewed, obviously, to Terraform users. And uh, this question about using CDK or Pulumi has come up uh, several times. And full disclosure, you know, Cloud Posse, you know, we do mostly Terraform. I just want to give you some ammunition or some thoughts on how to think about this and why, you know, I, I think there are arguments you can say that this is even in the favor of your Go developers because that, hey, dude, Terraform is in Go, providers are in Go. And we, we, you know, we have a lot of Go developers now on the team and we're writing providers for Terraform. And what is nice about Terraform is it provides a very simple DSL actually for expressing your infrastructure. And if you need the complexity, if Terraform's not enough for you and you need to do some other things or you need to integrate with your own company's APIs or things like that, you can write your own providers. And Cloud Posse has now started maintaining two of our very own providers for this reason, because we've hit some of the limitations in Terraform. So what is, you know, what's the right answer here? You know, there's a lot of great things coming out of Pulumi. Do your research, check it out. There's a lot of stuff for, you know, for CDK, but it's a nascent, it's a nascent, CDK for TF is nascent. It's very rough around the edges and you, you're doing code generation and code generation just adds another layer of complexity to debug what's going on. And one of the reasons why people wanna use a formal language like Java, Go, or TypeScript, or whatever, is access to better debugging tools. But if you're doing code generation, what is that really buying you? And you're not going to be able to use those debuggers to do this. And the examples you find in the ecosystem, and if you go to Stack Exchange, and you want to try something, you're not going to find examples for all the stuff you want to do. So are you optimizing for the right thing? You're optimizing like on this purest argument that you know, we are a Go shop, we should write Go. We are a TypeScript shop, we should write TypeScript. And maybe let go of that. Don't try and fit a square peg through the round hole. Expand the horizons, see what's out there. Give it a shot. Well, yeah, I'd like to add a couple of small things. In general, uh, I mean, you, you said pretty much everything what I completely agree, but I just want to emphasize even more that uh, Terraform uh, or CDK for Terraform is not gonna to make your life easier by any miracle. <laughs> Even if you think that, oh, I know programming language, now things will be easier. Now but you have no. two problems. <laughs> now you have problem that you still need to understand, uh, like what is Terraform, HCL, plus uh, study by heart all limitations of Terraform. And then also monitor CDK for Terraform repository and learn uh, what kind of features were not implemented uh, still <laughs> inside of the CDK for Terraform. Yeah. Because if you find something very cool and shiny and you want to use it, I guarantee that this is not yet supported in CDK for Terraform because it's another product which depends on Terraform. That's so really, I think that's great. Try to, yeah. try to think about this as uh, you add another tool, so you need to sacrifice something. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So CDK TF, yeah, you're eliminating the risk of like, well, it's another syntax I need to learn. So HCL, dude, you will learn HCL in an afternoon. It is the easiest freaking syntax out there. What you won't learn in an afternoon is the hard learned experience, the, the trial by fire. And whether you use CDK or whether you use Terraform, you're still going to have to learn those the hard way. Well, there is something, uh, one of the reasons why uh, I ab abandoned uh, uh, Pulumi right in the beginning, it was you, because uh, I was trying to deploy a uh, subnet and I started uh, dealing with the subnet uh, splitting and stuff. And I was accustomed to your uh, magic subnet solution, <laughs> and basically yes, yes. splitting up out of the box. And that's why I didn't go through the, <laughs> it was just a test, but you know, I, nah. It, it, one of the things people like about Pulumi is it's incredibly dry to express things uh, and do some simple things that way. I get it. But I, I feel like what we've been able to accomplish at Cloud Posse for our customers is, well, I guess our modules aren't very dry. Like there's, we, we offload the complexity there, but the user of it gets a very po very polished experience in the end. That's easy, very few inputs, 
very reusable, you know, good building blocks. Yeah, that's exactly the point of uh, when people say that, oh, HCL is hard. Well, but then don't start writing modules, uh, first of all. Start, yeah. consuming, <laughs> start consuming whatever other people created over some time. And I guarantee that 80% of your infrastructure is possible to uh, create using open source stuff. Totally. Um, so no, no need to go into lowest, uh, uh, like lowest level on HCL and think about uh, different types or different ternary operators differences and all this crazy stuff, which we have to kind you, of uh, feel, feel the pain. <laughs> and then exactly. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. You're probably doing something wrong. Well, okay, so two different ways. One is learn the basics, write the resources, learn why that sucks, and then start using some open source modules to make your job easier and appreciate it more. And then once you kind of get your head around that, start you know writing some of your own modules probably. Uh, or write modules that encapsulate other modules. So you're basically exposing the interfaces that you want your users to use without having to uh, do all that heavy legwork, all that testing. 